In this episode, we'll go over some useful animation tips like drawing in passes, help with lip sync and time saving techniques as we finally animate our short. Let's do it. Tip tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut and welcome back to the How to Create an Animation series. Last episode, we looked at creating the title card for our animation. So if you haven't watched that yet, you can do so here. If you have watched it, fantastic. In this episode, we'll cover some useful animation tips. Now, I've made tons of animation courses here on YouTube that cover the mechanics of animating. Beginner Adobe Animate courses, courses on animating scenes, lip syncing tutorials, wave principle tutorials, character rigging tutorials, and 12 principles of animation tutorials. So I'm not going to tread the same ground again. Instead, I've got a few tips for you that I use to get this animation done quickly, efficiently, and to a high quality. That last one, of course, is pretty subjective, but hey ho, here's a few things I did whilst making this animation that helped me and I think might just help you too. Number one, animate in passes. Don't make things complicated for yourself. If you've got a complex character, multiple characters, or a lot of secondary movement in a shot, animate them in different stages or passes. In this shot, I animated the dinosaur's block green form first, then went back and added the details, then went back again and added Timmy's block form, and then went back again and added his details. If I tried to do all this at once, I definitely would have messed up the timing and energy of the scene as I was focusing on just drawing the characters. Number two, the bounce technique. If you need to save time in your animations, especially if they're more whimsical and comedic, you can use something that I call the bounce technique to save precious time and frames. Here, Timmy is stretching for the dino. Redrawing each frame for such a small amount of movement would be time consuming and tricky. We'll probably get a whole bunch of wobbly lines as well. But this style of animation, which is quite simple, you can just stretch and warp the final frames for the smaller movements. This keeps the animation alive, saves you time, and adds a little energy to the movement. For full details on this technique, check out the detailed video on it right here. Number three, key mouth shapes first. When doing lip sync, either manually or with a set of visemes, do the key mouth shapes first. Break your dialogue up phonetically and draw the most powerful, unique, or obvious mouth shapes first, then animate between them in a way that reinforces the feeling of the sound, rather than the actual letters being spoken. This will lead your audience through the dialogue without too much effort on your part and without distracting them with potentially sloppy lip syncing. Number four, sometimes less is more. For this last shot, I just had Timmy bounce through two key poses. He's so far away from the camera that you can't fit a lot of detail in. So I lent into that for comedic effect, and I think having this bouncy flipbook style animation makes it a little funnier to watch. Obviously, this one's personal preference, but that is what I said I'd be talking about at the beginning of this video, so there you go. Number five, have fun. Finally, the most important tip is this, have fun with it. Sometimes, most times, animation is stressful, time consuming and tiring. You need to imbue your animations with joy and make sure that you do your best to have fun with them. Want to add in a stupid expression? Do it. Give your character a big stupid belly button? Why not? Fill it with colour, energy and passion. Obviously this all depends on the genre, etc. But the main thing is this. If you enjoy it, chances are your audience will enjoy it too. Once that's all done, you've got your animation. It's as simple as that. Animation's pretty easy, right? <laughs> Let's take a look at the finished product. Okay, Timmy, enjoy your bath. Don't splash around too much. Oh, grow your own dino, friend. Just add water. I shall call him Mr. Stunky. So that's it. You finished your animation and you're super proud of it, but probably at the same time hate everything about it and can only notice the things that are wrong with it. Don't worry, this is normal. Congratulations, you're an animator now. But you have to share your creation with the world, right? Which is why the next episode of this series is the final episode and we'll touch upon a few ways that you can exhibit or show your animation, whether that's for free online or in other places. 
So make sure you subscribed and rung the notification bell so you don't miss out on the final episode. And I'll see you all next time on Tip Touch. Absolutely massive thank yous once again and always to my level 2 and above members without whom this channel would not be possible. If you'd like to become a member of the Tip Top Zone for exclusive perks and benefits, please click that join button below. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks and tutorials. Thanks for watching.